Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome back to part 2 of my Left Commentant campaign here in Hearts of Iron for Moe Reich. At, when, you know, at this point in the game you can't even see us, you can barely read us at all as soon as we zoom in, enough that you could read us on the map, it instantly disappears. So not a good time for the Left Commentant, but that only means that uh, we've got only up to go. Uh, so I think the the first thing I'm going to want to do here is I want to recall Zhu Yue and Zhang Fakui. Um, it's only, that's only going to cost us uh, 15 political power. I'll talk about more th about them more about them in a minute. For right now, let's go with the hold on a sec National Revolutionary Army. Thank you. Uh huh. Also here. Whoops! Accidentally did a screenshot. National Revolutionary Army. Just uh, just cleaning that stuff up. Oh no. Wait a minute. I don't know. Jeez, I'm not even spelling it right. I don't think this is all gonna fit. Uh, let's just go with the Revo. Oops. Revolutionary Army. Okay, that'll do for now. Uh, so, we've got 15 days to get access to the sea. So the first thing I want to do is, we're going to come in here, and actually the first first thing I want to do is I want to introduce you to our military leaders. First up here, we have Field Marshal Li Jianxin, uh, who was born in 1885 in what was uh, in the Wuzhou, in, in, in which was then the Qing Empire. Favored by the Guangzhou government before the dawn of the Northern Expedition, Li Zixin became the Chief of General Staff and was in charge of KMT organization, administration, as well as the military of the whole province of Guangdong. When the expedition failed, he abandoned Guangzhou, forced to leave for the 4th Army, which was under his direct command. Facing him was a series of malicious accusations by other officers, as well as his own subordinates, who blamed it on him for not securing Guangzhou. Li retained his position in the Central Committee as several of his detractors went into exile abroad with their misgivings towards him alive and well. Despite his efforts to aid the leftist cadres and commanders trying to escape to the Commune of France, he was still being isolated and nominally assigned as the Chief of Army Staff in China. Inspired by agrarian movements and supported by Song Qinglin, that's everybody's waifu that everybody's screaming about, in Deng Yadan, he gathered the remnants of his forces, established the Zheng Fujian guerrilla zone. Li, being assigned as the commander in chief by the Central Committee, is currently following Wang Jingwei's order to rally exiled veterans for another insurrection. While waiting for a new revolution, Li is studying the Vetkrigera strategies and tactics. Well, he's got to apply them now. And over here is our lead general. We currently have General Lin Biao, born in 1907, so a bit younger. Actually, quite young, less than 30 years old. Having participated in the anti-imperialist movement as a student, Lin Biao went south to the Wampoa Military Academy after graduating from high school. During his time at the academy, he became fascinated with the ideals of syndicalism. Such a unique act made him famous in that academy and eventually gained him the attention of Yi Ting, who decided to give him special care in the future. Though young and favored, he has he had shown outstanding performance before his graduation. After the defeat in the Northern Expedition, he initially decided to pursue further education abroad, according to Yi's suggestions, but he finally followed the party's decision and stayed in China, leading guerrilla forces in the Zhengji Fujian guerrilla zone. And so here we are now. Of course, we're trying to we're gonna try to get access to the sea here. We're gonna press this here. Uh, now for the rest of you, I think the key is we need to start heading north uh, with everybody. And just, uh, yeah, just grab what we can, while we can, as fast as we can, basically. Uh, so we're going to be going really slowly here, initially. Okay, hold, 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 hold. Let's hold and come up here instead. We're going to try to isolate some of these armies here and uh, move them along the coast. Otherwise, we're just sort of going to spread out. Uh, Hunan is going to break out over here as is... Um, the Liang Zhong click, so uh, we're not going to try to get too far in that direction. But again, the key is we're just trying to get access to the sea right now. And uh, there we have it. Onward to Quangzhou. Okay, now at the moment we're getting less than half a point of political power a day. Of course, political power is extremely important. White Sun over China. The people in Long... Yan, right here, was surprised when a young American man appeared and walked around the capital of our revolution asking the locals questions about life here and our struggle. While his inquisitive behavior seemed widely, completely spontaneous and drew a lot of equally curious stares and wild gossip, it was actually the result of the hard work of our publicity department. The foreigner in question is Edgar Snow, an American journalist based in Shanghai. You know what, I need to look this guy up 
because I believe that this is the guy who died in real life when the, uh, no, never mind, never mind, no he's not. I was thinking of the journalist who died um, when the Japanese war with China in real life happened and they were on their way to Beijing and, and he got killed. Nope, this is somebody else entirely. Uh, I'll talk about him in a second. The foreigner in question is Edgar Snow, an editor, yeah, based in Shanghai, who came to Longyang to be the first Western writer to see our principles in practice firsthand. With the help from our experienced scouts, he got safely across the front lines. He spent his time here doing interviews with leadership figures, including Madame Sun and Wang Jingwei, but also with ordinary soldiers and common people on the streets. He was already quite sympathetic to our cause, and we made sure to see made sure for him to see that our fight is just. Today, his book hit the stores in the West and is already lauded by some as the scoop of the century. It will surely have a positive effect on our image in the eyes of the people of the world, despite whatever mean-spirited naysayers or apologists of imperialism may crow about bias. So I'm pretty sure what this is uh, supposed to be referencing is the book he did, Red Star Over China, uh, which is, uh, it's, it's basically an account of of you know Mao, Mao and his army uh, in the 60s, no, excuse me, the 60s and the 30s. Uh, so this is like over 10 years before they end up uh, taking control of China. And uh, anyway, we got the message out there. We don't we don't get any sort of bonus off that. Maybe like a war support. Well, I guess it's just how foreigners feel about us. Uh, yeah. Okay. What's going on here? Why can't I see my army? Okay, so keep spreading it out. Get over here to Guangzhou. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have these two isolated pretty easily. Good. We need to be going up here to Nanchang, please. And the, uh, we're kind of depending on the Anqing to take Nanjing. Although if we can manage to get all the way up there, I'm sure not gonna complain. It uh, seems nigh impossible, though. I will say. So we're going very slow here, very, 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 very slow. Okay, I'm trying to still secure Fujian. Okay, so it's it's. You see, the thing is, there's a difference between the provinces and the zones. They're considered to be different areas. So over controls Jian and Mihu and Ganan. So we need to take. We're trying to take Jian. We're trying to take these two areas and this area. Okay. Oh, what just happened? Did you guys see that? Like, y you guys saw that, right? Where the front line here disappeared? What's up with that? Are they surrendering? Oh no, I think they've now they're converting over to the Nanjing click. So they've basically effectively abandoned those men uh, to death. That was a little Three. weird. Uh, but that's also why the Nanjing uh, are scum. Let's also take a look at some of these leaders out here in the world. So we've got here the Xianding Click, who Yang Zingjing is very, very tired. The fifth Rsing Rin Poche. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Is the Kirin family out here? The hard general. I could be Satsuki Kirin. I love Satsuki Kirin. I love her so much. I want to cosplay as her. I'll probably do pants, not a skirt. Oh, guys, Moe Reich Ma Click, 100% confirmed. It's going to happen. I had no idea this was a thing. Because <laughs> I asked, the Moe Reich devs gave me several nations leaders that I asked for. I did not ask for the Ma Click. I had no idea. 10 out of 10, I'm so in on that. <laughs> uh, it, okay, anyway. So, all right, here's the Sichuan click. We have uh, Yang Yen. Is this a... Uh, hey, this is a... Uh, it's Yang from Ruby. Um, second worst girl of the four. <laughs> Kidding. She's okay. Uh, I, am a, I am a complete sucker for Weiss, though. Uh, okay, I don't know who all of these people are. Oh, you gotta fix that. You need a face for Chen Kai-shek, guys. All right, so yeah, uh, uh, Ching, you know, he's still in his suit, quotation marks, in his suit still. Yan Jijian there. Of course, we all know who uh, Zhang Zhulu, the little petite girl, the little tiny girl. And uh, look who's in charge of Mongolia. Aren't y'all happy about that one? Okay, okay, Get ba back, getting back to work, though. Uh, the commune is going to send us some volunteers. Yes, please, and thank you. Okay, we already served one of these. We just now to control Ganan out here, so... Uh, 
we're going to try to, I think I do have to basically have every single tile under my control, so we're going to need to zigzag it, which is a little annoying. We have our hands out on one military factory. Isn't that wonderful? And we're already out of steel. Because the, which makes sense, the, uh, I won't be able to construct anything, whatever. Uh, I need steel. Yeah, all the all the resources in the south of China are here in the Lingguang Click. It's going to be tricky trying to figure out which directions I want to go in and where and why. Okay, a little bit, little bit further north here, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, meanwhile, we have a slight excess of infantry equipment. We'll try to get one more division out if we can. Come on, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. All right, that's good. It, it secured itself. Um, yeah, get up here. All right, this division, we're still having trouble actually defeating these guys, which is a little bit annoying. Okay, but now these ones have very nearly been cut off. We'll send a division in here. So there's no there's no victory points in this area, so they should, uh, yeah, they, they should suffer from a lack of um, resources. They've lost Nanjing. Okay, it's just a matter of time. What is this? Tibet Improvement Militia arrive in Longyan. A strange sight befell the Central Committee this morning, as a ragged group of Tibetan soldiers and dignitaries arrived in Longyan, carrying copies of the Three Principles of the People. Their leaders have been beseeched the Central Committee for a task force to carry out revolution in Tibet. Proudly, the Central Committee has appointed Huang Musong as the General Advisor of Tibet. Furthermore, the Central Committee has authorized a new division to leave for Lhasa and liberate the Tibetan people from the corrupt, raging, and tyrannical Trimon. Take a general and troops to victory, so we're losing manpower. Uh, Tibet gets a new field marshal. Oh, wow, okay, I think we're about to turn these guys into radical socialists. Gallo seizes control of Ecuador. It's nice hair. That's not Gallo. Or, that's, I thought the hair was going to be brown, but I guess it's just that sapia thing. But it's good, we're getting our hands on more uh, cord areas. Um, looking, looking real good, baby. You all need to come over here. And that's it. Wow, two weeks, two weeks, and we've uh, defeated the Nanjing Click successfully. Oops. Let's go ahead and take the states. Thank you. Awesome, awesome possum. Uh, so, first thing we need to do is we need to get ready for the Anqing Click to make a bust a move on us. Did we capture equipment? Not particularly, but uh, we, we just in time, at the same time, finished up this. And we have that new infantry division that just, uh, yeah, that was just created. Uh, we got no army experience in that war, pretty much, because there wasn't a whole lot of fighting. We didn't even manage to defeat those two armies. Uh, okay, what's, what's next, though? We have a few... Excuse me. We have a few dockyards now. And three entire military factories. Call me crazy. I'm actually going to start setting up the artillery and stuff like that now. Um, we have some political power, so we want to immediately recall Zhu Yue and Zheng Fakyu, which really, it's not a priority, but I'm going to. Anyway, the former Kuomintang general Zhu Yue and Zheng Fakyu stayed in India after the failure of the Northern Expedition. They have spent several years in India as military advisors. After we successfully carry out the revolution, they will be willing to return to China to continue our revolutionary cause. Let's bring them in. Uh, right now. It's it's a cheap thing. It doesn't cost much. The Nanjing Click has been defeated. Capitals move there, by the way. With the capitulation of the remaining Nanjing forces, we have finally bested one of our competitors for control of the five eastern provinces, and our first major step towards securing the region has been achieved. Our next priority should be to finish prosecuting our conflict with Anqing so that a peaceful east can be established. Hurrah! Okay, we can start integrating some provinces right here, but I don't think I necessarily want to do that, and here's why. There are focuses, for example, the provisional legal code that will make it that I can integrate areas faster. Although, really, uh, this entire branch here going down to the Ganon New Deal, I don't think I'm even going to deal with it because there's just other things that I can do in the meantime. For example, uh, I want to get the rural literary programs going so that I can get a third research slot as quickly as possible. So, in... In service of that, we're going to establish the Jiang 
uh, the Jiangfu based government with our uprising in full seeing the times come to move out of the wilderness and establish a provisional nationalist government in areas under our control this is going to give you some infrastructure and political power as well as weapons and weapons are of course quite important uh, we can also mobilize some militia units uh, these aren't great but they're going to fill in the front lines so that's why I'm going to be trying to prioritize them because we're also already at partial mobilization and we just don't have the factories that I think would make it necessary for us to go to a war economy. Besides, we don't have the war support anyway. Uh, so for right now, yeah, we're going to mobilize in, um, in South Jiangshu, around Neijing, basically. Uh, so we'll get three divisions out of that one instead of two. And uh, I don't know if I read this before. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Last chance to realize Sun's vision. I, I read that. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Next up, uh, why not? Let's actually trade a little bit for the resources. No, 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 actually, not from Portugal. No. Um, Princely Federation will do fine. Oh, actually, shouldn't we do it from the Baratia Commune? Because they actually help us. We want the Commune to win out there, of course, ideally. Victory for the left, wherever we can find it. Okay, so for right now we got 150,000 in reserve. We also have some extra militia units now. Uh, I think we're gonna go though with the cavalry units before anything else. Uh, whoops. Uh, okay. Oh, here's that Mars movement ripoff. <laughs> okay. We want to we want to fill in the front line as much as possible quickly and with cavalry so they can move faster because we still, we do only have eight divisions they've only they've maybe got twenty they've got a lot of recruitment population though I don't think we can beat them in a straight up fight we're gonna have to be able to zigzag and take their areas and and really ideally we'll we'll take their their military factories so then they just run out of guns and then we can eventually defeat them no problem uh, no problem but you guys get what I'm saying here. Death of Pius Eleventh. Quickly now, quickly, quickly, men, women, whatever you are, fighters, fighters for China. Return of the Central Committee. After a long and tension-filled voyage from Paris, the KMT's Central Committee has arrived at the newly captured port of Wenzhou, uh, which I think has now been renamed to Jamien. Oh, no, no, it's up here. Uh, my bad. Uh, you know, forgive me. I'm not Chinese. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> that makes it sound like I'm working on becoming Chinese. Never mind. Because of the ongoing state of chaos in southern China, there was a it, this was a quiet affair with little in the form of pomp. Wang Jiwei later delivered a brief statement outside the customs office to reassure local citizens that peace in Wezhu would be ensured. Along with the nationalist government in exile, a French trained and equipped regiment of Chinese expatriates has arrived to assist in securing southern China along with stocks of Veltkrieger rifles and ammunition. Welcome back, Chairman Wang. And uh, so we've got an infantry brigade, more weapons and such. So this is the, the committee zone. This is the army they formed in Paris. Try to keep an eye on them. A lot of these, a lot of these special units, though, once I really get going, they're just going to be guarding the ports. Uh, all right. Zhu Yue and Zheng Faku arrive from the Baratia commune. Thanks to Sun Fo and others' struggle, finally Zhang Faku and Zhu Yue were called for the new revolution and have returned to China recently from the Baratia Commune. These hard years as attaches in the Baratia Commune made their will and perseverance stronger. Some committee members think the right-wing thought may make the complicated KMT more indeterminable and even impact the progress of the revolution. Their splendid military ability will greatly strengthen our forces. So let's actually uh, talk about these guys. So one of them is a field marshal, I believe, or... Uh... Right? Wait, hold on a sec. Welcome home, comrades. Uh, social liberalism goes up a little bit, and we have rifles once more. So can we, uh, can we get one or two, one of these, one more? Okay, uh, let's take a look at these guys. So Zhu Yue, uh, was born in 1896. He joined the Revolutionary Party and has been a firm believer in Dr. Sun's revolutionary ideals ever since. After the failure of the Northern Expedition, Zhu Yue was relegated to rearguard action several times as his tendency towards more right-wing views made him distrusted with some of his peers. 
Despite this, he always performed his duties well and would later rendezvous with the main forces. After being forced into exile along with several members of the Central Committee, he was appointed to the Baratia Commune as an attaché. Unhappy with this post so far from home, he, retreatedly, he repeatedly tried to gain permission to return to China for, to rejoin the revolutionary struggle. And then Zhang Yuni, Yuni joined Tong Minghui in 1909 and participated in multiple early revolutions in China, such as the New Army Uprising. He joined the Guangdong army several times, but he always remained a starch supporter of the three principles of the people. After the failure of the Northern Expedition, though, Zhang supported the decisions made by KMT Central Committee to reinstate Li Zixin. He left for Guangxi under the instruction of Deng Yanda. When the news of establishment of Jingfu guerrilla zone spread and the conflicts between new Jiangxi clique and old Jiangxi clique escalated, Zhang, Zhang Yunyi and Deng, and Deng Xiaoping obviously a very important figure there, Deng Xiaoping, left the front line and established the Yuzhiang guerrilla zone. This enraged Li Zigrong and Bai Chongqi, who saw it as the kind of a trail that led to the failure of the northern expedition. And this finally leads to the split between the leftist KMT and them. They accept the advice from Li Rongting and Liu Wen. Under combined assaults from multiple sides, the Yuzhiang guerrilla zone eventually fell, and both Zhang and Deng began to pull out and arrive Jing Fu's guerrilla zone with Zhu Jing Guang. I don't know if Deng Xiaoping is actually a character in, in Moe Reich, though, or Kaiser Reich, I should say. I don't know where he is, if he's a minister or anything. I, I genuinely don't know. Let me take a look. I don't see him there. Uh, Deng Xiaoping. Oh, yep, there he is. Economic minister, radical socialist, balanced budget advocate. Hmm. Cool. Uh, all right. So we need to... What do we need to do here? Uh, we're just trying to yeah, we want to crank these divisions out as quickly as we can because right now they've got more They've got more of the border covered than I do and whoever can fill in every tile. That's who's gonna win this Incidents in Wang Zhu the place that we just ensured peace Occupation plans for Wang Zhu and other AOG ports have been severely lacking compared to the meticulous steps and lines of advance drawn around Jiamin. When NRA forces occupied the city of Wezhu, spontaneous anti-foreign riots began all across the city, leading to the murders of numerous German residents and the looting of much of the city's uptown districts. To complicate matters, several smaller advanced groups of nationalist troops also participated in the looting until more disciplined... Ow. Sorry, something poked me over here. More disciplined units arrived to secure the area. Wenzhou is now significantly damaged from the civil unrest. Another mess for our foreign secretary to sort out. Okay, so we, we had a little bit of some discipline problems. It's fine. It's fine. Why are we building a civilian factory? Stop that. Yeah, let's just get repairing this stuff. That's, uh, that's plenty to keep us busy for now. Besides that, I think we can speed it up. Okay, Shishuan clicks dealing with its own little civil war. First International Congress, the usual stuff. Good. Okay, the base government has been established. We could do stuff like support some of these areas, but again, um, we want I want to get that that first that research slot up and running. Much of the rural population of China is too poorly educated to be trained for modern warfare, let alone a specialist. A, a Minxing endorsed program to provide literary education, literacy education for both adults and children should be implemented as soon as possible to counteract these programs. Yeah, because we're not going to get our fourth until I think down here. Yeah, so we got to get this first one early, and then uh, and then basically this stuff all is that has to do with uh, uniting China. Over here is uh, putting our army together. I'm not sure which way we're going to do. I'm leaning towards one nation, one army. Uh, yeah, because we don't need that much additional recruitable population. I think I think it is still better to just have higher quality troops, even when we're fighting other Chinese forces. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. How's this going? 11%. Oh, got three additional divisions ready. Come on. We've got to wait until they're at 20%. It's, uh, it's going to be a tight one. What we got to do is, this is going to be key. We've got to isolate. There's at least five divisions out here. Those have to be isolated and destroyed. Okay, next up... Uh, Jinling actually doesn't have that much space for factories. I think we're going to... 
I might come down here. Let's just build some infrastructure for now. Yeah, th this this is what we have to be able to take quickly. I want to get to 24 so that uh, Lin Biao could start becoming a... Actually, hold on a second. She is... She's a level 4 and she has the infantry officer trait. Yeah, she's she's the best that I've got right now. Very, very good. Plus, uh, naturally having the, uh, the Mountaineer trait is amazing, especially when you're fighting in China. But we're not interested in any of this naval stuff. We're not going to be for a very long time. Could mobilize some more NRA militia divisions. I'm just trying to think if there's anything that yeah I can't. I don't have any designers down here. Uh, I've already got my military staff. Uh, like yeah, yeah. I don't think there's a need to spend on anything else than working in these areas over here. So let's mobilize these NRA divisions. More of them. Uh, integrations can wait. All right, this is it. They're coming after me now. Just in time for the... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pause, pause, pause. Okay, we we're able to get those divisions out just in time. Uh, well, just after in time. We'll be okay. Okay, so up until now, Chen Tiaoyuan's revolt against the Nanjing regime and our own uprising have avoided directly confronting each other. Uh, however, this uneasy ceasefire was never meant to hold, and now war has officially broken out. With the Qing, em the Qing Empire's intervention on the side of the Anqing... Our forces will have to deal with additional opposition, the entirety of the Zhili clique and the old imperial order, a long and bloody revolutionary war is ahead of us. We will break the Qing allies. So, okay. Here's what we've got to do. we got to slow down for one, and then we're going to try to come through here. Another of you is going to try to come over here. Um, we've got tons and tons of cavalry in this area, so we want to take advantage of using them. Like so. Another one of you come here. Lots lots of them are going to come into the Wuhu area. Um, okay. Yeah, this is good. A lot of, I see a lot of good here. Much good. Double plus good. This guy is gonna cut us off, which is severely annoying. And yeah, we gotta, we're gonna just have to stop that. Okay, you come, no, 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 come over here, come over here and cut across. Good, good. All right, uh, one of these divisions is not moving. Let us rectify that. Actually, no, just kind of, yeah, yeah, come, come in here and then cut across, so we just got to slice these into thirds, essentially, um, these various divisions. Of course, the cavalry moves slightly faster, so that's what we're trying to have them maneuver with. These guys are retreating from this front line. Please stop. Yeah, if we can get Anqing, it, it's going to become very easy. War propaganda could be a good idea. Yeah, we will do war really? propaganda. I think we can get some nice bonuses later, but uh, I just I just want it now for shit. more support. Okay, everybody's moving. Nobody's just standing around. The famine has broken out in Sichuan. I I have not played Sichuan yet, but I hear this famine um, is just unbearable. Uh, you can't. It, I I haven't heard of anybody being able to achieve success with Sichuan because it's just such a pain. Um, right, some of you are already coming up here to Hife. Good, good, good. Oh, looks like somebody made it to the... Uh-oh. It's alright, they're not taking the front lines. Let's try to come down here. A little bit of a mess, but it's war in China. <laughs> and then nobody's got enough troops. Okay, now, stop this guy from moving. Very nice, very nice. Uh, we're not getting anywhere, though, if we don't take uh, Hanqing itself. They have no factories. <laughs> what? Well, that's not good for them, is it? Nope, stop this guy from going any further. And you also need to press here. Uh, don't have enough command power, of course, for force attacks, even though we only need 25 at the moment for, for our purposes. Here, you gotta isolate this guy. And come down here. This is good. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of their divisions have been uh, 
are, 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 are just in uh, positions where, yeah, they're, they're surrounded. Seven of their divisions are surrounded. And when you are a nation with no factories to your name, uh, that means <laughs> most of your guns are about to disappear. This is terrific, actually. I'm, I'm very pleased with how this is going. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to end this war in this episode. Uh, very, very unlikely. Uh, so we'll just stop it there for right now. Okay, thank you very much for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games. In the next episode, we will hopefully defeat the Anqing. Uh, where you know we're on our way towards these literacy programs, and then uh, and then I basically am going to have to decide: do I want to go north or or south? And uh, some of these focuses can be bypassed if I've already defeated them. So, for example, the preparing of the Lower Yangtze offensive, this is going to go away because they declared war on me. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm Conquering History Games, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.